I'll be brief. Um, thanks for allowing me to step up here and say something. This is our fifth Ardesh. Uh, it's probably one of the most memorable ones, but uh, thank you for the recruitment drive, everyone, uh, the, the un uninvited guests. Um, yeah, we... Uh, the, the, national, the national ideal that we, that we like to stick to, there is the nine principles, and it is unwavering. Um, it's not fashionable. It's not... Uh, it's not trendy. It's not revolutionary. Because there's absolutely nothing revolutionary about the national ideal. There's nothing revolutionary about putting your own people first in your own country, putting your own children and your own family first. There's, there's nothing subversive or revolutionary about that at all. Uh, it's just been... The word revolutionary has been used out of context in a lot of ways. But that's it. There's nothing revolutionary or subversive about us. Um, you know, it, it, it well behoves me to know and understand and to realise that it is the nature of all things great not to be exact. Um, cultures, populations, nature can overlap in certain ways. However, the, for the, uh, the liberal elite, the liberal bourgeoisie, the arrogance of them to actually think they can plan a civilization. The Irish nation has come about organically through millennia, just as any nation has. It's born of the ages. We didn't get here overnight. And for the, an arrogant member of the liberal bourgeoisie, namely the government of Ireland, to actually think they can do it and to be cheered on by the liberal leftist media complex at every opportunity. Um, the, the, you know, we're not having it. We are the opposition. We are the genuine opposition. That's why we don't get a look in in the media. But that's okay because we don't want any favours from them. We put our own work in. We knock on every door in this country. We leave to every door in this country. And when we do knock on the doors and we get a response, the relief of some people that, we, that they've never heard of us before and the relief that there's just ordinary people like us who are willing to back the nation. Um, it's, it's something to see. It really is. We also get the other side of it as well, where we're shouted away from doors, but that's all right. We'll take that. No problem. Um, but yeah, the relief that, you know, wow, you actually exist. It's like when we do a banner drop. Uh, trucks, cars, ordinary people beeping the horns up at us, giving us the thumbs up. We also get some obscene hand gestures as well, but that's okay, we'll take that. But uh, people, there is a hunger out there. There is a hunger out there. You know, all you need is the power of sight to verify that, that there's just too much, too much foreign people just coming in. They're just duck walking into the country. They're aided and abetted to duck walk into this country. And we've been made second class citizens in our own country. Our children just won't get a foot on the ladder at all, you know. We want our children to flourish. That's what, that's what national, nationalism is about. It's about flourishing in your own country and being the best you can be in your own country. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's, it's not that... You know, it, it's great for people to come up here and give us some old, you know, give us some history and stats and all of that. That's great to hear. It helps to understand them. But it's really not that difficult, what we're about. It's about putting our own people first in our own country. Um, and never mind the begrudgers, you know. Um, it, we've done a video there for uh, a commemoration of uh, Michael Collins. Um, and I did say that you know, the international finance capital and its borrow boys, 
which is the career politicians. You know, they just they just see our country, our nation as they just see Ireland as an an industrial unit to be stocked with consumption and production units, cheap labour. Well, we're not. We are the Irish, and we're not taking it. We're just not taking it. I also stated in the video that we are, if, they're going, if, if the international finance capital is going to use cheap labour and, and, and the rest of the world, people to come here from the rest of the world illegally, uh, that, is, that is a biological weapon to wipe us out. And the best thing we can do is to respond in kind and for young people to start families as soon as possible. I know it's difficult, but you know what? When you, it's not easy to have a family. There, there's challenges, but it brings out in quality. It brings out qualities in you that you never knew you had. And when you start a family, that's what it does. Um, I'm glad to see some people took me literally and started a family as soon as possible. No names. I hope my words had an effect. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's well due uh, good news, and uh, thanks for taking my advice. <laughs> so, um, I can't say much more, but that's, that's basically the bounds of it. Um, but yeah, you, I hear people talk about, when I hear people talking about the, the mass immigration into the country, and they say, oh, we signed up to this, and we, no, no, we didn't. The, our, our, the Irish nation did not sign up to have that. The liberal bourgeoisie signed up to it when they went to Brussels or wherever they go to and had some fancy wine and cheese party. That, man, that must have been some wine and cheese party. <laughs> you know, uh, we didn't sign up to that. I often, uh, I remember a, a statistic from when I was at school, say secondary school, when I started secondary school, probably about 83. And it was this, that the population of Dublin was about a million people. And half of that population was under 25 years of age. That demographic, that was a booming population. That was healthy. Unfortunately, we were losing it to immigration. We were losing our best people. Went all around the world, you know. And, and that's an argument that I hear people say. Oh, sure, didn't the Irish go everywhere? Yeah, we did go everywhere, but we went everywhere under a completely different set of circumstances than the people that are coming in here now. <laughs> completely different set of circumstances. The money it costs to operate the government, it's just such a blow at government. We don't need a fraction of it. And as Edmund Borg said, that governs least, governs best. We need to cut back and get rid of the quangos, the NGOs, the whole lot of them. We owe them nothing. We owe the world nothing. Oh. <laughs> Ireland is our priority. Just as my children are my priority and we make no apologies for it. Arrest your eye.